Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how you can get the perfect shot every time making your own DIY backdrops. No need for the replica boards, no need to pay all that expensive money. You can make them in various sizes and you can have different looks as well. I'm going to show you how you can do all this for the low, no need for those expensive replica boards. I'm going to show you how you can do it yourself. Now don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more DIY projects, crafting, reviews, projects, and of course behind the scenes of my business while I'm helping you grow yours. Let's go to Home Depot and I'll show you everything that you need to get to make your own backdrops. So the weather is not trying to let me be great because I had to wait it out in my car. It was pouring and your girl did not have an umbrella, but we are at Home Depot. Let's go on inside before it rains again so I can show you where to go. You need to go to your lumber section and you need to find your project section. There's a section where you have all your pre-cut boards and all your project boards. Okay, so first I just want to let you guys know that these boards right here, I use these for my backdrops. Do y'all see this wood? Y'all see how big this is? Can I make sure you can see it? Y'all see the measurements? That's 48 by 96 inches. That is a long board. You can use these and they have multiple you can use the plain white one that they have. That's the Kingston brick. They have the authentic palette. That's the this is this is the one that I have that I would use for like, you know, hardwood floor looking one. They have like a wood paneling one. They have a brick background and they also have this other one. There's one at the top. It should be gray. I can't really see it. There you go. They have this one and I'm going to lift this up so you can see the other one. I'm not sure. But these are all the different large panels that you can use for your DIY backdrops as well. Like I said, I have I had two of these and I cut them in half and I'll show them to you in the house, but I definitely want to show that to you. But you can definitely use the white one if you want a solid white backdrop and you can use this. It's really thin. The white one, of course, the white one, of course, is thinner than the boards. So, you know, you can get it cut down so that way, you know, you can be able to fit it in your car. But they have the white, they have all different colors, all different ones, if you wanted to use that. I just hit my leg. But now this is where you wanna come for your pre-cut boards. In every hardware store, you should have some pre-cut boards already so you just get the size that you want i will need to be buying some bigger ones i'm gonna pull it out for you so you can see it's kind of hard because i'm holding it and trying to record myself this is the i'm gonna pull out the two by two because okay so this is the two by two one so this is the two by two they have them in different thicknesses as well. So I want you to see. And they each for different prices. But like I said, when you get those replica boards, those replica boards cost a lot of money, honey. So you wanna get this and do this one. It's much cheaper. So let's just pull out one of the two by twos. This is the two by two size. So you can see it. That's what it looks like right there. Okay. So when you get that, you can do your stick and peel. If that's too small for you, then you get the two by four. You know, you don't want it too thick because they have to fit in the brackets. This is a long one. That's way too long. But I like the two by four. So I will be getting some two by four. I'm going to pull the two by four out so you can see the length of the two by four. So this is a two by four. So you can see, you'll definitely be able to get, you know, a much wider shot. Cause sometimes on my two by twos, I have to, you know, edit the background because you know, it doesn't go all the way, but you can do the same thing with the two by two or the two by four. So this is where you want to come. You can get that or you can use these. So, you know, you can buy two of them. You can put the stick and peel paper, two different ones on each side, or you can buy four of them. I mean, whatever you like. You can even do your DIY pegboards in here. You can paint that white. I've seen people do that. Get whichever one you want for your budget. Whichever one you want. 
So again, you just come in your Home Depot. It is raining hard, y'all. I'm stuck in here now. It stopped. Now it's raining again. And I don't have an umbrella. <laughs> I don't have an umbrella. Oh my God. The hair's gonna get wet today. As you can see right here, it says project panel. So you just want to ask them where the project panel section is in your local hardware store. And you can come in here and you can get all these different boards to definitely do your DIY backdrops or whatever other projects that you need. All right. And there you have it. Okay, so we just went to Home Depot. Now I'm going to show you how you put your boards together. As you can see, I already have the stick and peel on mine, and I was literally trying to find the old one, but I couldn't find these two. You know, I just moved. I don't know where I put them. But I'm going to actually put this one. This is the same one that I have on my um, table. So you can do front and back. You know, you do need to bend it over so that way it can stick, but you know, you can make it work as well. If you don't want to buy four boards, I'm going to go back and get some more boards, but I'm actually going to um, put this marble one on this one so you can see how easy it is to do. Now, this one I bought really large because I needed, to, I needed it to cover this, but you know, these I bought much smaller and I'll have them linked down below in the description box for you. There's so many different patterns that you can get. So you get whatever pattern suits, you know, your need and your brands. You'll also need, everyone was asking me, what do you use to connect the boards? So I went online and I just kept trying to find some type of brackets. And the replica boards, the actual replica boards that you can buy that's like 60, 70, 80 dollars, which is ridiculous. I just don't understand why it costs that much. They sell the brackets separately. So I'll definitely have these linked down below. I'm not sure if they're out of stock. I don't know if they still have them, but I found them. And these were the only brackets that I could find that would work. So I'll definitely have those linked down below in the description box for you guys. I'm also going to show you because of course this is, you know, for smaller products. I'm also going to show you what you can use for large products as well. So you don't want to miss that. You want to stay tuned, especially if you have a clothing brand, you know, you're not going to be able to fit a lot of clothes on here. All right. So I'm just going to open this up and show you how easy it is to apply your stick and peel. Okay. So I'm just going to pull this out and I just want to make sure I have the right length for it so don't look at my jacked up nails I'm going through some stuff I was testing out some stuff all right so this is definitely you want to definitely have enough space for it to cover and fold over. So you see this is just enough space for it to fold over. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut. Put that out the way. And now that I'm gonna put this on this side, you do not wanna pull everything off at one time. You do not. You want to make sure you have a squeegee or something ready and available to get out all those bubbles. So I'm just going to pull back very lightly and then I'm going to put that underneath. I'm going to tuck that underneath. I'm going to try to get this as centered as I can. Let me move this other board out the way. And this is going to go really well with this one. So this one actually will work better with that board. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure I have enough space. You don't want to start with any bubbles. So it's buckled up right here. So because I'm switching it out, I'm just going to go ahead and tear that off because I don't want the corners raised. You'll be starting with the fresh board. I already had something on the other side of my board. Okay. I'm gonna tuck that under.
I'm just gonna tuck that under, making sure I fold it. Okay, and now I'm gonna take this right here. I'm gonna start straightening it out, squeegeeing it out. And little by little, I'm just gonna come down and I'm pulling the paper at the same time, making sure there's no air bubbles. Really simple. And you can get any type of look you want. I didn't use this one first because I wanted to make sure I had enough for my table. And then I just never got back to it because I knew I was going to do this video. So now I'm glad I changed it out because I didn't really like the other one, but I bought it. Okay. Now I'm going to flip this over. Oop, and it's sticking to my desk. Look at that. <laughs> it is strong. The contact paper is very strong. So now I'm going to fold it over. I know, I know. My nails look a mess. Okay, what I have not perfected yet, you hear my table squeaking, are these corners. So I know there's like a way to tuck it in and fold it all nice and perfect. So I'm gonna fold it like that and then fold it over. Okay. So again, I just cut off some of this excess because you don't want it to be too bulky. So I'm cutting that right there. And this sticks down on everything, so let me pick that up. So now all I'm gonna do is just fold that in a little bit because you don't want anything sticking out and fold it over just like that. Ooh, I hate the sound of this paper. Paper on paper, okay? So again, I'm just gonna, I'm cutting off this side. I'm folding that in, and I'm gonna, now you see I got all this under here, but it's okay. I'm gonna fold that over. I'm actually going to use one of these to hold that down in the corner. Let's see. Hope you guys can see really well. I'm using a new camera with a new mic. I hope it does much better. I'm waiting for some more accessories to come in because I do not want issues where you guys can't say you can't hear. I'm so sorry about the last video. All right, just tuck that nice and neat so that way everything is smooth because you want it to lay and fit in the brackets. It has to fit in the brackets, okay? So you see that? All my corners are nice and neat all the way around. All right, and now you have a new surface. I love this one. All right, so let's go ahead and put it all together. Before I go any further with today's video, I have to give a big shout out and thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. It's an online learning community where so many creatives and entrepreneurs like myself go to to learn new skills. There are thousands of classes you can take across 250 countries from the comfort of your own home at the touch of a button. You can literally learn anything with Skillshare. Help jumpstart your business, get those creative juices flowing, level up the skills you already have, or take a new career path. With Skillshare, it makes it so easy and simple. I'm gonna jump into desktop mode and I'm gonna tell you all about this new class and awesome new instructor I found. And it goes great with today's video. So when you find yourself searching on YouTube and you're still not getting the answers you need, or you don't want to pay thousands and thousands of dollars to take classes elsewhere, try Skillshare because you can access many topics 
all in one place for one great price. The first 1,000 of you who click the link down below will get your first month of Skillshare for free. Let me show you what it's all about. So when you come on to Skillshare, you can browse all the different topics of categories that you can choose from, such as photography, cooking, editing, illustration, music, animation, web design, freelance, marketing, and so much more. But I came across Tap at the Parks Advanced Lighting, three ways to level up your product photography course, and it was amazing. She talks about how to have your photography stand out amongst the rest. She talks about different techniques to add drama to your shots. She talks about using diffused lighting versus natural lighting. She even has a course where you're using backdrops and white flat lays and your shadow boxes for Etsy. So she has multiple courses, but in this course, she talks about three ways that she uses or three techniques for using to get the best shots using effective highlights, direct lighting, and single lighting techniques. So listen, I'm just going to say it. Her course was the bomb and she is really good at explaining things, breaking it down and gives you the confidence that you need and teaches you how to use your current studio setup to create the photos that you want. She teaches you how to give that dramatic flair and she teaches you how to have your photos stand out so people are drawn into your product. Yes, she's showing food products, but you can take these techniques and apply them to whatever business that it is that you have for your current product shots. So if you you don't like her course you can definitely try out someone else because there's so many other instructors to choose from that's the great thing about Skillshare that it is for everyone and there's someone for you that meets your needs at where you're at so if anyone is interested in learning a new skill or leveling up your business definitely click the link down below to try it out Skillshare is offering my first 1,000 viewers who click the link you will get your first month for free. That's right. The first 1,000 viewers will get all access your first month for free. Once again, thank you Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so now I'm going to connect them and you can put them any way you want. You can switch it up. But of course, I'm going to put the dark at the bottom. So it's going to go just like this. Now, in order to connect the brackets, it has a groove for each side. So all I'm going to do is... Now I'm going to stick this one on this side. You want to be very careful when you stick it in. I definitely take my time when I'm sticking them in because I want to make sure I don't tear the paper. So all I'm doing is sticking them in the grooves. I do one at a time because they will pop out. So you see that one just popped out. Do it from this angle so you can see. You can push them in just like so. Push it down. Doesn't take, I just turned it upside down. <laughs> so like I said, you can do it in any direction you want. So if you want the dark at the top, you can definitely have the dark at the top. But I like the dark at the bottom. Sometimes I give a nice reflection as well. And there you go, nice and sturdy. You can easily break this down. You can easily keep it somewhere if you have the space for it. I wish I had the space, but I never had to take it down. And again, if you do do a different pattern on the other side, I can easily flip it. All you would have to do is make sure that you know you don't get this, you can edit it, or you can just do your um, corners a lot smaller if you wanted to. So you can do four different you know, designs in one. And since I have this here, you put your products right here, put your, you know, you push them up, put some flowers or something in the background. I'll show you different clips of what I've done, but I want to show you, this is more so for products, not for clothes, but I will show you how you can use it for small items as well. So just so you can see, if you were displaying, you know, say for instance, some hats, you know, I just want to show you certain things because you don't get a lot of space using the two by two. Now, of course, if you had the two by four, then that's when you would get a lot of space because sometimes when I'm taking pictures for my Etsy shop for products, you know, because I know how to edit, you know, you always get the corners. Even if I'm taking pictures on my phone, even if I'm taking pictures on my phone for, you know, Etsy or for whatever, Shopify, when I get this, can you guys see? I don't know if you can see. 
Can you see how you see the corners? So you got to get really up close to not get the backdrop, you know, but you'll always get the sides. So you might want to get the two by four, but if you don't want to do that, you can also do, you know, hoodies as well. If you're doing something where it's just, you know, like a top down shot, if you're doing the top down shot, you know, you're just getting the backdrop. Just want to give you all your options. So this definitely, you know, wouldn't work pretty much for clothes unless you got bigger boys. So as you can see, you don't get a lot of space when you're doing clothing. So that's why I recommend using backdrops. So now take a look at these other options. Just some quick clips of how I've, you know, transformed my house, my living space. You can transform any area. You can pick them up, you can put them back down, or you can keep something stationary if this is for your clothing brand or something where you're constantly going to be taking pictures. But this is for smaller items, smaller products. You know, I always do my mugs here. I always do my tumblers and different things like this. So you want to always, you know, get nice product shots, change up the background. I always keep flowers and plants. So I always use my mugs and I'll throw in a flower or something in the background, you know, take pictures. Of course, this clashes because of the color, but you know, you just want to get different things in the background that will, that will complement each other and make the photo look good. Then it looks even better once your background is blurred out. Looks really nice. So you can do so many different things. These boards are so good, inexpensive, compared to the replica boards, compared to the professional boards that they sell online. You can make them yourself and get your own backdrops as well with the stick and peel. So now I'm gonna show you how I do paper backdrops, or you can purchase other type of backdrops, you know, to do your clothing as well. You can drop them anywhere in your house or anywhere you have space. Let me show you now. So here you can see me using the white backdrops. This is a seamless paper backdrops by Savage, or I purchased them from Superior, whichever one is cheaper. These are like 12 feet long. They come in different sizes. So you can definitely, you know, get these if you have a designated area, if you want something stationary, but I had this up so that way I can do videos and I can do product shots. Now, if you don't want to purchase backdrops, you can always do outside photos and use what's in your neighborhood, like brick walls or different things like that, if it works well with your brand. So I love outdoor shots as well now all these videos or all this footage is from previous videos from my older videos that you can all go back and check out but I definitely love outdoor photography as well but whenever I'm incorporating my models I do indoor shots and I do outdoor shots I like to do a variety of both depending upon what I am shooting but this again was a stationary area that I had in my house and I would interchange the backdrops I had different sizes different colors and I had them all hung by my supporting rods but you can get those backdrops as well or for Amazon I'll try to have those linked down below but mine was stationary so mine were the 12 foot poles that I kept the heavy duty ones because the paper backdrops are really heavy but again this was the board I wanted to show Show this to you um, as well this is the board that I showed you at Home Depot I had it cut down to size you can definitely have them cut it for you or you can keep it as one big long piece and I would use this it's nice and thick it's nice and sturdy I would put all my clothes displays on here I would use this and it just worked great they have light ones they have dark ones so you can get whichever one you like so here are some quick examples of things I've done in the past using the different backdrops I had, the paper and the boards. I try to always use different techniques, whether I'm layering, whether I'm doing different folds. Of course, I add music to my videos to get people to stop and stare and pay attention to my brand. I try not to do the same thing every time, but you know, videos definitely help out. And then once I take my video footage, I use the same thing and I do my product shots. So the back Backdrops definitely help out. Like I said earlier, I never, ever, ever put my clothing on the floor. You want to always keep your backdrops clean. Um, I just always try to do something different every single time because you definitely want people to keep coming back to your content. Videos and great music, great photos, that all helps and plays a part. It's all a part of the brand. So you definitely want to try to get different angles for different shots, high shots, low shots, side shots. Listen, you got to get it all. I hope this video helped you guys out just a little bit. If you have any questions, hit me up down below. As always, I'll see you in the next video. Now go take some awesome shots.